Welcome back to the Hearthstone Collegiate National Championships. We've had one match already today. Duke University taking it three games to two over Georgia State. And we're about to get into match number two. My name is Cora Georgiou, and I am joined on the desk by Nathan, that's Admirable Zamora, the dynamic duo that is here to rock your world with some Hearthstone casting. And match number two is going to be North Carolina State University taking on University of Texas Austin. What are you making of this? Yeah, some more traditional looking lineups between these two. But the, the real story here is that these teams have not secured their playoff spot yet. Uh, both of them are sitting at four and one, and they need that fifth win to make it into the regional playoffs. So this is a nail biter match for them. And whoever drops this one, they are going to have a tough one on the following week because then there's one chance left. Teams with a 5-2 and two record or better will make it into the next phase of this competition. These teams are both 4-1, and one, so the winner of this match makes it through. The loser is going to have to put it all on the line next week. North Carolina State University, Surf Soldier 13, Arm and Hammer 7, and Parrot Parrot, Operations Research, Operations Research, and Industrial and Systems Engineering. I don't know what it is, but names that are like a double name, like Parrot Parrot, they're just so much funnier to me. Like, parrot, parrot. They just <laughs> it's well, statistically, it's twice as funny as one parrot, um, because it's two. It's like, um, like a. Oh, that was cool! A big flag in the background. Yeah, that was nice. I don't even remember the story I was going to tell. I was just captivated by a big flag. Parrot, parrot. Oh my God, a flag! And here is University of Texas Austin guys. Toss is dirty and hub chub. Undeclared environmental engineering and undeclared. Uh, the the alternative way to uh, have your food delivery service hub chub. It is the generic brand. Yep. <laughs> Hub Joe. <laughs> Fantastic. I wonder if they'll have a big flag. Some of these guys they earlier. They do have a big flag. Yep. It's just. Uh, I remember it. It's just not their school flag. Had them earlier uh, in, in in the collegiate series, mm -hmm. too. They were, they were on broadcast, and uh, I liked what I saw. I'm looking forward to seeing what they can bring here to the table. Now that's clutch time. Got to win one of the next two weeks. Yeah, this we've is a seen, big one. We've seen a lot of repeat teams on stream, but. It's really nice to, you know, remember what we saw from them the first time, if, you know, if they won and we had a chance to speak to them, see if they can really, you know, make it happen again. See if it wasn't just a one-time thing. This is the week. This is That's the what week. I love about it. I love when it comes down to these super clutch moments and, and these are make it or break it. You got to win. Got to put your cards on the table. And North Carolina State University has taken the Warrior off the table. And UT Austin has taken away the Warlock. Yeah, it's interesting to see Rogue Shaman and Warrior all available. This is a direct contrast from last match. Now, I'm curious at a 5-0 and zero record, how much of an influence you get by teams maybe relaxing a little bit. You know, Georgia State said they didn't want to relax. And I don't think they did. It looked like they had the tech choices that they were expecting to face against that they brought a lot up accordingly here. Uh, that's a lot of small-time Buccaneer available, and that card definitely took a hit. It absolutely did, so much so that we've we've definitely seen it affecting the lineups that people have been bringing for the last two weeks. And uh, UT Austin, fun fact, they played three Murloc decks last week. Uh, they have not secured their spot in the next phase of this tournament yet. Do you think we'll be seeing three Murloc decks again, or, or is maybe this a little bit too important but, to be Finjaying around? You know, you know, maybe not. I think there's a chance that Finja is maybe um, in in their rogue deck. Uh, Duena actually finished ranked number one with a Finja rogue deck uh, yeah. in in February ladder. So that that is something that is is very strange. We've been seeing it crop up in a lot of the aggressive decks and kind of using that as as their uh, their engine to try to drive that last little bit of damage. But it, it comes with a cost. It's five slots in your deck. Uh, when you draw the Murlocs independently, not nearly as strong mm -hmm. as some of your other cards are. Um, but there's definitely potential for it. The fact that there's no Paladin here, I think, is is the telling answer. There's probably, probably not, not three, Murloc, three decks. Murloc decks this time. But we will certainly have to see NC State and Texas. Both teams are going to be kicking it off with Shaman. That's a throwback. Thunder Bluff Valiant. I haven't seen that card since, like, 2008. I haven't seen that card since, like, three days ago on Ladder. But man, you know, I actually was it shocking? haven't played against a shaman on ladder in like a week. Really? Alert the presses. I've played against that a lot of rogue. That has to be news. I've played against a lot of rogue. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that I might have something to do with Duena getting rank one legend. I guess a lot of it has to affect him playing a lot of wild, too. That could also, yeah, you might have to uh, put that disclaimer at the beginning <laughs> of your statement. I well, also have been playing some so wild. I, I think it was two mid range decks here. We saw uh, NC State mulligan away a Hax, but they've picked up a Flame Wreath Faceless and it's like Swamp Boots. So on Texas side, um, we saw them throw away the Thunderbluff Valiant. That was the dead giveaway. 
but they have Hex and they have Ginny Water Speaker. And, and this is, this is a, I think, a really good time to talk about the difference of those two cards. Ginny Water Speaker is trying to stabilize your board position. It's trying to simply keep you alive so that you can get value from your cards. Where Flame Wreath Faceless is trying to do almost the exact opposite of that, where you're trying to destabilize the board and just create this giant monster that, that trounces your opponent. In this matchup, Flame Wreath Faceless tends to be better than Ginny Water Speaker. However, well, what does that mean? Well, seven is strictly greater than six, Admirable. <laughs> what does that mean for Hex Tempo? That's just science. The Hex Tempo plays a big role in that, and in this matchup is largely dominated by on-the-board combat. So if Hex gets found and they can get value at a Ginny Water Speaker, I think Texas is going to be at a pretty massive advantage here, and it's going to start with that Totem Golem. Well, you're absolutely right. This is going to be completely dictated by on-the-board combat. And because Texas has access to the spot removal in the form of the Hex and likely a Lightning Storm in the build, they're going to be more well-equipped to deal with the minions that NC State is going to be able to put on the board. So likely, if NC State can't just run away with this in the very early game, you're right, Texas is going to be very favored moving on. Yeah, it's, it's just simply given the, the hand state, too. Texas, with that Hex, I think is favored. Without that Hex, I think they'd be in trouble. And suddenly, NC State's just in a lot of trouble. This this is kind of the nightmare start for any deck. Unless you have Blood to Icker and Fiery War Axe, this is, <laughs> this is a bad start <laughs> for, you, for you. Well, especially when, when you're the more aggressive Shaman deck, not that they know it. You're the more aggressive Shaman, and you haven't been able to put anything on the board for the first two turns. Yeah, the, the Acidic Swamp Boost and the Flame Wreath definitely, definitely telling me that they're more aggressive. But, you know, maybe there's, some, maybe there's something uh, up in this deck. Maybe there's something else. Maybe this is their take hmm. on the mid-range battle, where instead of running Small Time Buccaneer, you simply just run Thing From Below and Flame Wreath Faceless. It's kind of a throwback to uh, the way that 6-0 used to play this deck. Yeah. He had Thing From Below and Flame Wreath in here and relied on his early game to carry him. Now, he didn't have Hex. Oh, my. That's Ooh, a huge one. That's nice. And now suddenly, NC State, they're, they're at a big fork in the road. They have two priority minions down with Tunnel Trog and Totem Golem. Now a third one gets added to the board. Do you sacrifice life or do you sacrifice card economy to your opponent? Well, good luck. We've uh, <laughs> we've seen plenty of cases where sacrificing card economy means you just lose. Um, but also, if you sacrifice life, you could just lose. So I don't think that there is a positive outcome here for NC State. They're they're between a rock and a hard place. Oh yeah, between a tunnel trog and a totem golem. Between a totem golem and a manatee totem. Yeah, do, you, do you kill Texas Fountain of Youth, or do you start to strip away the bludgeoning object they have? This is honestly their best option. Oh, Texas is so happy about it helps this. Compound, they're trying to compound the issue on board and make it a big thing, but this is where that hex is devastating. Now NC State's going to be relegated to three mana on the following turn. Texas has gotten a second draw from the Mana Tide Totem. That's not leaving the board anytime soon. What? I don't want to say that's game, but I think that's game. I mean, a lot of times in in these matchups, you can you can tell from very early on. But in some cases, from the opening hand. I mean, how often do you get three priorities to stick to the board? That just doesn't happen very often. Uh, well, this is this is one out of one times for for this for this, <laughs> this particular set. Uh, so 100 percent of the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's how math works, right? <clears throat> Oh my. Now here's the thing. They, Texas doesn't want to necessarily overextend mm -hmm. into a lightning storm, but they didn't see lightning storm. Opponents so are overloaded on four. They keep your spell power lightning storm. They're like, ah, you're going to have to get big rolls in order to take care of everything. So let's go. I like it. The overload is, is the difference here. Now three cards from the Manatide Totem still not off the board. And that is a two mana spirit clause. Nothing matched up for NC State this game. No, not at all. Very poor first three turns. Honestly, I'm curious if Acidic Swampoos maybe should have been the play for them on turn two. They had they had no way in sight to really contest Totem Golem. And if they had simply played Acidic Swampoos, let it get eaten. You know, maybe they find a weapon, maybe the Feral Spirits can start to contain the board, but uh, their lack of early initiative killed them. I mean, now Texas knows... NC State has no clear. Uh, they can feel absolutely confident about extending onto the board. 
Yeah, the, I mean, the next draw for NC State is going to be the big one. They need to find Lightning Storm. And if they do, they have they the do. stronger minions in hand. Yeah, if, they, if they do, we might have a game here. But it's, it's impossible to know if they even have it in the deck. They do, however, have the dollar on playing yeah, card back. that's true. I mean, they have, they have Spear Claws. They have Acidic Swamp Boost teched in. Yeah. Thing for Blow and Flame Wreath. Two Feral Spirits. It would be tough to find the room. It's not that I'm surprised to see two Feral Spirits. I'm just... Yeah, I mean, where, where does more than one copy of Lightning Storm really fit into that? Healing Totem on top of it all was probably the best role there for Texas. The Devolve? Ah. Okay. Seven mana and a Devolve. What can they get done here? So the Ferals are, are two cost mm -hmm. um, on, their, on their printed cost. So that means the Totem Golems are going to one. The Ferals are going to one. The healing totem is going to zero. The tunnel truck is going to zero. The man going, going to two. two. So it's still a lot of potential power they're facing. But then NC State has well, they've got some follow-up from there. they got a lot of taunts, too. I mean, maybe this is the start of something. They're going to need to keep drawing heat, though. They're also going to need to not devolve their opponent's stuff into another tunnel truck. Yeah, that'd be great. Oh, this man. is why I don't like this card. It has to be coupled with something else. In a lot of cases, yes. Easy game number one. My goodness. I that mean, was a steamroll because of Totem Golem. I think that NC State maybe could have held on a little bit longer. Um, they weren't dead, technically. They were pretty, pretty dead. It was, it was, uh, it was a lot of damage, one might say. <laughs> um... But technically, <laughs> a teensy bit. I don't think it equaled 17. Just a teensy bit of damage. But who knows? Either way you slice it, UT Austin has taken game number one. Their Shaman game just panned out significantly better than NC State's. And, and that's just an example of why the Shaman decks are so strong. When you get Totem Golem, when you get Tunnel Trog, when you have a strong follow-up, that is enough to seal you games. You've got to be able to check that. I mean, that's the reason that Shaman was, what, 50% of the ladder for part of the last several months it, it was incredibly incredibly strong there's definitely a lot of reasons that contribute to that um you know like like influence of of articles being printed yes. that sort of thing um you know just the what the professionals tend to do has an influence on the latter certainly but yeah. either way you cut it it was it was very prominent yeah it was just because it's powerful it's very strong it's hard to deny that tunnel Trog and total golem are two of the best cards out there they are however two of the cards that will not be out there at least in standard when Journey to Ungoro comes out. Yep, standard rotation is going to be a big shakeup. I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited at what we're going to see. It is going to be an incredibly different meta. And then Wild, I think, is going to be even more wild. I'm, I'm just really excited to see what... Uh, Five set difference at that point. Yeah, that's going to be huge. That's a lot of cards. It's going to be really That's a ton weird. of cards. Who knows? You can only speculate so much when we know, what, three cards from the set? Um, but certainly more, I believe, on the 17th of this month. So something definitely to look forward to. But in the meantime, we're working with this really strange interim meta, um, which has the balance changed small time Buccaneer and Spirit Claws. So you're seeing some more mid-range, certainly not as much aggro as before, but I think even with the, the balance changes, pirate decks are certainly still strong. Yeah, they definitely are. Um, we've been seeing a lot of the pirate warrior decks move more towards Argent Horse Rider instead of small time Buccaneer. Um, and we've been seeing Shaman completely move away from that package into, uh, again, more of the mid-range style that's there. Uh, they do always have that early threat, as we just saw, but th the Pirates have, have definitely kind of fallen by the wayside. It fits much more into the Warrior style, which is just high risk, high reward. You're looking for big payoffs from your early cards. You know, if you, if you really think about it, stuff like Dread Corsair upgrade those those are pretty bad cards all things considered it's when they find their synergy they become super powerful instead that's what this deck's about is just finding that super powerful turn well very appropriate that we were speaking of pirates because here we are going to Ooh. see our first pirate deck of the day and our first patches drawn of the day i, I swear it's it's higher than the, what the actual percent is <laughs> you think so what uh wow what a hand for nc state too yeah it's very nice this is a pretty poor matchup for Pirates, all things considered. NC State has uh, the early minion power to match a lot of times, and then they always have the natural taunt power from their hero power. Anytime they roll Stoneclaw Totem, 
and they're facing down a weapon opener, that can be bad news for Texas. But they have feral spirits to compound that as well. Texas needs to get a board lead, and they need to be able to take advantage of it, and those three hero powers are not typically ways to do that. It's not what they needed here. You know, that being said, this this is the kind of hand they have that needs to play a longer game. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there's a chance that, that either Lesser Heal or Reinforce no. could be minor benefits to them. Like, if this turns into a grindy battle, as a lot of you know early minion battles can do, yeah. Those two might be able to pull some weight. One ones definitely beat zero twos. That's possible. And in you know, in that same vein, I would say Stone Claw Totem certainly useful against your opponent too, so maybe you give some nod to the shaman hero power, but it's gonna end up being reinforced. At the end of the day, yeah. one ones are just they're just better than zero twos. They don't have a way to take advantage of the totems. Yeah. Nearly as much where NC State always can threaten flame tongue. Texas Very also true. typically tends to be the aggressor in the matchup. So when that's the case, they, they need to be able to actually deliver a final punch. Honestly, I think I think the hero powers are, are going to end up playing a big role in this game. Well, you say the Texas is the aggressor, but when NC State has Totem Golem, Totem Golem, Jade Claws, or Flame Tongue Totem, uh, I don't know. It's hard to uh, keep up with that, especially with no weapon in the opener for Texas. Well, this is an interesting turn. I mean, Totem Golem is certainly really good, but uh, they're going to be facing down a 3-1 on the following turn, it looks like, with uh, they attack into Finley, and then Bloodsail Cultist cleans up the Totem Golem. That's one outcome. How do they follow up to that? So they're going to they're gonna either relegate themselves to Feral Spirit or to Jade Claws next turn with this play. So the Bloodsail Cultist is actually pulling a pretty significant amount of value here, and that's a perfect draw. Ooh. Yeah, that's great for Texas. That's uh, exactly what they needed this turn to be wow. able to challenge the board. That's a big draw for Texas. That's very well might. No, well, I was going to say, it might pull a, a Devolve, but... Honestly, it, it might pull a Devolve here. This is looking like a really hybrid Hunter build from NC State. We've seen, you know, Flamery Faceless. We've seen... Obviously, all of the aggressive openers, but now that there's no pirates, you have room for devolve. There's like this early game stuff, and then there's these tech choices mm -hmm. that are meant to be spectacular in the right situation. I, I, I personally understand the, the devolve that much right now, because they're fighting so hard for board. When does that card get a ton of value? I know you're not a fan, and I know we haven't seen devolve get that much value, <laughs> but I promise you, it can be good. Have we seen a team win on the broadcast no. with devolve yet? Wait. Yes, but only because it was a Jade Shaman Mirror where one team had two devolves and one team had one. So the team with one, won. They're going to tank their damage here. And I think rightfully so. They have a lot of defense on their side. So if they can just stack the board in their favor, it's pretty tough for Texas to pull that back. To have to pay both Bloodsail Cultists without getting any weapon buffs. That's rough. That makes it a lot harder to win. Well, they might not play the Blood Cell Cultist here. I mean, th this is kind of entering the stage where I think the hero powers make some sense. Yeah. I wonder. You know, how much life total does Texas have to play with? You know, how many resources do they need? They need to land this Blood Cell Cultist for value in order to win. They're going to take their immediate value from it. When they draw an exhaust first mate or fiery war axe. That's it's the turn to look bad. at. Is that a hungry crab? What? Do my eyes deceive me, Admirable? Well, no, that can't be right. That has to be a misclick, right? Oh, you did say uh, they brought three Murloc decks University of Texas week. Austin brought three Murloc decks last week. NC State may very well have known that and decided to put Hungry Crabs in their Shaman deck. I haven't seen Hungry Crab in Constructed since... Oh, God, who was it? Was it Trump that played Hungry Crab, like, years ago as, like, hard counter to... Yeah, that was a long wow. time ago. I actually remember that because uh, Murloc Warlock was uh -huh. like the deck. Yeah, it, was either, it was either Trump or Crip. I can't remember Trump. who it was. was it was brave, Trump? He was brave enough to go into the fray <laughs> with Hungry Crab being his big counter play to it. Just add, just add on that little extra tempo and pressure. So you take out Pirates from Aggro Shaman, and your tech choices are Devolve and Hungry Crab and Acidic Swampoos. We saw that as well. Well, if they're anticipating Murlocs, the Devolve is consistent with that, at least. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, and they, they knew what their opponents had brought last week. 
it's very possible that they just tacked some of their decks against that. But then, you know, you have the self-ban. You kind of have to wonder, you didn't self-ban the shaman with the hungry crabs. Granted, it's still shaman, but you got hungry crabs. I mean, the fact that they have hungry crab and devolve in their hand, they might lose this game. <laughs> oh, dear. If Texas picks up a weapon, like a cheap weapon... Yeah. The reinforces is, is like it's honestly kind of dangerous to NC State right now. I think, granted, an Arcanite Reaper would be pretty good too. Yeah, Firework definitely would be better, but Arcanite it's be welcome. Any anything that can buy Texas value at this point, I think they're pretty welcome with. There's not a lot in their deck anymore that doesn't. Ooh, that's a nice one. Stone that'll Claw take, Totem. It'll take away that weapon potential. The natural enemy of the Pirate Ooh. Warrior. Hungry Crab. Nothing. Still one mana, one, two. No title. Oh my okay. gosh. Well, it's still pretty good, though. I mean, they use the Saucy deck in here. They clear up the Flame Tongue Totem if they want. You know, do they want to just isolate the Flame Tongue and let the Reinforce slowly chip it away? I mean, that those are real considerations. Either way, it's looking like... What now? Your prediction may come true. Yeah, looking I, like the, the hero power may play a role. I, I think you, I think you uh, keep the the one health minions <laughs> around. Yeah, this is definitely right. Slowly chip away at that flame tongue totem because if it's isolated, what is it actually doing right now? Looking pretty. It's not a very good use of a card. Well, I mean, I say that as I craft golden legendaries all the time, but you say that as you stare down a hungry crab. Azure Drake's a pretty mean one. Yeah, Lightning Bolt's not half bad either. I don't know. It may be Shaman with some silly tech choices, but it's still Shaman. And the Pirate Warrior still had a weak start. Oh, there's Mortal Strike to answer the Azure Drake. Lightning Bolt doesn't directly contest the board. I mean, they're losing their Flame Tongue Totem here. And Texas is likely to end with a, with a Fiery War Axe on their side or to pick up the Tunnel Trog with it if they play that. I don't know. I mean, the Reinforce might have actually been like, like sort of a magic touch in this one. An upgrade. That's pretty good. Do you still give up the mortal strike? Because then your. I don't think you do. Fiery war axe goes into the. I think you give up the two stone one. Stone claw. Yeah, you think so. Mortal strike more valuable than the two one. The mortal strike can make sure you can kill a, like a flame wreath faceless or a thing from below. That's really true. Easily. You know they have they have twenty five life right now. I think it's plenty to, to to work with. They're gonna need all the board they can get. Yeah, so I like keeping the Mortal Strike around. Plus, eventually they're going to draw more weapons here. They're, they're not in any position to go face with weapons right now. No, Texas still has another Fiery War Axe, two Nizos First Mates, and two Reapers. The thing that concerns me is that they're thinking about this so much, this might tell NC State that they have Mortal Strike. I think that's a pretty easy read to make. Like, what else could they be thinking about here? Like, it could be just like a, like, I have Leroy Corcoran, in hand, maybe. Trying, to my bro trying to bluff or something. And not do any, uh, not too many things that could have been. That's a nice draw. What mana cost are the Silverhand recruits? Uh, one, I believe. Okay. So they will turn into either Wisps or Murloc Tiny Fins, effectively the same unit. Oh my God! Oh, we could turn into Murloc Tiny Fin, and then, and they then you hungry crab, crab it. it. Who? Oh. We found a use. That would be nuts if that was a factor. <laughs> Oh, NC State, give us what we want. I mean, it looks to me like they're thinking about that. They're like, hey, is a 3-4 just good enough right now? I mean, if they overwhelm the board position, that's enough for... I mean, Texas does not have the tools in their deck to come back from situations like that. I mean, Devolve is literally a two-mana buff here on the Hungry Crab. That's all it is. If these recruits become Tiny Fins, they could be Wisps. Oh, that's the worst draw on the deck. Texas needed continued value here, and Leroy is not what they wanted. How often is Leroy? I mean, it's very often like not a good draw mm -hmm. until that final stage, but here it is just actually the worst draw in the deck. Like, there's almost no hope of them closing with that. I mean, even if they landed Mortal Strike at six damage, right now that's 16 total. They're still five off of killing NC State. That's assuming that there's no more taunts in the way, that there's no life gain that happens. Well, if Texas goes full face here, 
picks up Arcanite Reaper or Corcoran Elite, I think then it's they could it close eight. it out. I mean, maybe maybe it's kind of a blessing in disguise. The fact that it's so weak kind of forces your hand. Yeah. I don't think they can afford to kill minions anymore, though. Not with that draw. No, just not the way their hand played out. And you can see him talking about it. You go face I honestly feel like gear. he just said we're not going to win that way. <laughs> <laughs> and that they're just about to go full face. Yep. I mean, that's all they can really do. You get the Leroy down now, at least you right know call. that Stoneclaw's not going to block it. I may eat my words here. That actually may have been a really good draw. It could be enough. Six if damage away. NC State puts them below 12 and Texas gets Corcoran or Arcanite. It's possible. I mean, they certainly can't use the Jade Claws as value anymore. Well, NC State's got a lot of damage, too. Oh, I didn't even look at that. Three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. <laughs> I mean, they have 17 this turn. Yeah, spell damage would give them 19. Taunt will also just pretty much save them. Oh, baby. <laughs> I think you default. <laughs> Try to get the Hungry Crab buff. Please do it. They're going to yes. do it. Oh, my God. Yes. yes. And they're going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> this is nuts. <laughs> Look at the confusion. Oh my god. That's so beautiful. I didn't think there was going to be a more fringe scenario than Sacrificial Pact in the build, but Hungry Crab just might be it. I'm telling you, I, it wasn't the deciding factor in this oh game. Oh god, it's just no. It didn't it mean anything, but it's awesome. Tied one apiece. Hungry Crab, 100% win rate in participation in broadcast. In like the last year and a half, hundred <laughs> percent. Tespa man, just continues to deliver. You never know what may happen. Yep. Lethal damage available. Game three, one apiece. Man, NC State did it with style. They have a flag on their wall. They have a hungry crab on the board. And now they have a win for themselves. And this this is an important match for these guys. Whichever team wins this will have a 5-1 and one record, will ensure themselves a spot in the next phase of this tournament. For the losing team, they need to find a win next week or they are not going to make it. That's right. I mean, this is this is probably the big match of the day, uh, just given the records that are here. Yeah. Uh, the, the first match, the, the teams were secured in their spot. Uh, it was still a very competitive match. It was fun to watch. But, they, they've, already, but they've, done the, they've done the first job at this yeah. point. These two teams still in that hunt. And you would think the teams that are, are secure in their next phase of this match are the ones that would be, be a little bit uh, a little bit adventurous, maybe have a little bit of liberty with their deck choices. But no, NC State with the Hungry Crab in the Shaman. That is something <laughs> At that four and one. I have not seen since Trump did it three years ago. This is potentially their tournament life on the line in this week. You know what? Maybe they think we need to go all in now. We got to put all our cards on the table, and some of those cards have to be hungry I crab. I reward. I, <laughs> Absolutely. I, you know, I while I will debate the tech choices, you can't argue with style. Can't argue that they did win that game. We have another tweet to bring up on the screen. This one comes to us from at Stisha Five. What was your first golden legendary? Mine was Scenarius. Scenarius as well. Really? I, I remember when I first started playing, I, I like exclusively played Druid, mm -hmm. and I was just flipping through cards and was like. You know what? I really want a golden legendary. And I just clicked the crafting button, and gold scenarios were just staring at me. And I went, OMG. And That's beautiful. It. I just made and it. I take that one. No, I, uh, it was the first golden legendary I ever opened. Um, and it's still why it's my favorite card today. Just something special about that, uh, that first golden legendary. It, it made me a little upset because I opened like three of them shortly oh, after that. But yeah, that'll hurt. I'll take it. Nothing you can do about it. So if you have any questions that you want to ask us, feel free to tweet at Team Tespa. Go on Facebook forward slash Team Tespa. Your question gets chosen. It gets featured on stream, and then you receive the Dalaran Flame card back. Nothing wrong with that. Sweet. We are going to be getting into game number three, NC State taking on UT Austin. It's now the Mage and the Rogue for NC State, and UT Austin has the Mage and the Warrior. We saw that Pirate Warrior in the last game. Didn't do too well. No, Reinforce uh, certainly didn't get the job done. And what it, what it ended up boiling down to was just the value that 
NC State was getting from their cards. A lot of their cards went two for one, and there was not an early weapon from UT Austin's side. I mean, they they had to play both Blood Sail Cultists as just a three four, no value from the battle cry. That's a that's a big detriment to that deck. If it does not have an early weapon, it struggles with its synergy. And considering NC State was essentially playing with two less cards in their hand the entire game, because Devolve and Hungry Crab were quite literally not necessary for them to win that game, and they still managed to pull it out. Here you can see them oh, the fresh off on. their Hungry Crab victory. They're like, can you believe it? They Hungry Crabbed us. And he's like, they did what? And he's like, they, 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 they Hungry Crabbed us. us. We're going to be on Reddit. It wasn't from a Maelstrom portal. The battle cry happened. It was a thing. It was a 3-4. And it that looks glorious. like a Tempo Mage to me, and that's a Beneath the Grounds at NC State's hand. If they think this is a Reno Mage, they will keep that Beneath the Grounds, and that will cost them in this game. I mean, I don't think you put it in your deck if you don't want to draw it. So it, it definitely seems like something you would keep if you're targeting Reno Mage. But we've said it before, we'll say it again. Tempo Mage is become a lot more favorable since the pirate nerfs. Yeah, it's definitely a, a more popular choice it, since uh, it's it's really the deck that uh, is trying to carry aggression at this point. Got to step up in power when Buccaneer gets moved from two health to one health. That's a big, big bonus for Tempo Mage. And so here at NC State, going to keep two pillager. They're going to keep backstab to try to hedge their bets a little bit here. And they're going to hang on to beneath the grounds. But Texas has that key to Mage Paradise, the Mana Worm. Ooh, that's a Blood Mage, though. All right. The key to Mage Paradise. We gave Mana Worm the key to Mage Paradise. He is our one mana hero. TJ told me that. We celebrate him. That doesn't surprise me at all. You know, TJ TJ's the man with all the, the, the buzzwords. He used to play so much Tempo Mage. Did he really? Oh, God. It was like he played Control Warrior. He strike me as a Tempo Mage guy. I, he, you know, for me, I, he was just a Mage guy is what it was. Really? And uh, so he used to play, like, almost exclusively Control Warrior. He played thousands of games of Control Warrior. And then moved on to Mage. And then he tried every Mage that you could possibly <laughs> think of, I imagine. And Tempo Mage was kind of where he sat. Hmm. I learned something new, not about TJ every day, but yeah. Oh. It's a great opener. Store that one. Great opener for both hands, though. Uh, Texas has Arcane Intellect to try to find those key cards they need. Ragnaros, very heavy hitting card versus NC mm. State's Rogue if it gets to that stage. NC State has Blood Mage Backstab. They have Tomb Pillager. They have Azure Drake. And they have the coin naturally. So they got a lot of things going in their favor. It's very important to note that NC State very well could still be playing Small Time Buccaneer. Uh, now we've mentioned how it's still very viable in Pirates, but in Rogue, because they have the natural weapon on turn two, it's likely that you still put the Buccaneer in the deck and just hope that you can get three damage from it. Yeah, I, I, think, it, I think it sits fine in this deck as well, where you, you end up getting the patches out of your deck. Uh, de you know, Deck thinning, I think, is a, is a fairly important thing in Rogue. You do want to draw your key cards. And at the same time, if the Buccaneer goes unchecked, that's a good way to fight off aggression or just deliver it yourself. Well, it's looking like the mayor of Mage Town may be regretting giving the key to the Mana Worm because uh, he could be going <laughs> down to this backstab in the Blood Mage. I don't think you're saying it could be about it. That's about as good as it gets for NC State. And you could Hero Power. Blood Mage. They need a card draw right now. Yeah. They'd love to find a, a second backstab. Some extra gas stab here. Second pillager. Preparation. Get that beneath the grounds online. Get some four fours in your future. Also just threatens the, the next spells for them. So Texas at some point does have to pay heed to that card. But this looks like an arcane intellect turn to me. But already shaking the head. They know that two pillager is potentially on the horizon. That's not a good thing. No, it's definitely not. Texas has a lot of ways to deal three damage. Four damage is a little bit tougher. Must be yeah, you generally need mana access to the fire blast. It's some sort of four mana thing. Yeah. Okay. You did just see one backstab. I, I do kind of like this idea from Texas. I mean, they feel like their hand is going to fall too far behind if they just simply arcane intellect. So they really want to just play this Flame Waker. Now, this is a very high-risk, high-reward play. If, if this succeeds, they will be in a pretty good spot. If this doesn't succeed, they have almost no action going forward. Ooh, okay. That's a pretty bad draw. And obviously, we have Caster Vision. We know that this Flame Waker uh, was going to live with what NC State had in their hand before the draw this turn. I think that's some really heads-up play from Texas. Yeah, it really is. I mean, if they choose Arcane Intellect here, they have no board development. They have Flame Wake mm -hmm. Arcane Missiles as their four. 
and if they saw two pillager then they just they die in this spot you know nc state they, they got to think about if two pillagers the right call here it could just it could just die could texas has board. frostbolt in hand yeah i could just firmly give texas forgotten towards mirror image i mean there's so much stuff that this is threatening right now yeah. seeing the backstab is what encouraged texas to make this play and NC State is going to bite the bullet and coin out that Tomb Pillager. It's it's kind of difficult not to in this spot. The only other play you have is beneath the grounds, but that, that's pretty sweet. That is a, a nigh-perfect draw. Get the hit, get the two damage. Uh, NC State's in trouble now. This is... Well. Hmm, Okay. You just beneath the grounds now. Beneath the grounds, going to eviscerate. I mean, your your Texas has two arcane intellects in hand. That's gonna make it a little bit awkward. I mean, it definitely does. I mean, this this game would likely go for quite a while due to the nature of of how both decks want to just build a board state and compile damage. Oh man, if Texas gets to draw before the beneath the grounds comes down. Thank you. That's plus one for Texas. Now, they do have to still land these missiles. Oh, well, maybe not. <laughs> or, you know, you just draw Arcane Blast. Had a lot of draws to do it. Oh, my. Okay. Well, I think Blast, Mirror, oh, Image are coming down regardless. You know, I think you can justify not using Arcane Blast in this spot. Really? The mirror images are going to naturally protect the Flame Waker. Mm -hmm. I think you, you do know your opponent has a clunky hand, though. Uh, and you that's know, maybe Fan of Knives is in hand. Right, but I, I the, sort, of, sort of the point I'm getting at here is I think they uh, could definitely be giving a nod to to getting um, more value out of their cards in the long run. And mirror image is, yeah. is doing just that at the moment. I think one is probably enough. That's, that's, you know, that's a good point. But they'd have an Arcane Blast here and, and four Mirror Images on the board instead. Texas has spell damage in deck. Maybe Arcane Blast kills a Drake. Maybe that's something worth thinking about. But here, Texas did... Uh, they whiffed four missiles to face. That's unfortunate. There's a lot of damage, though. I mean, th that is a real threat. The NC State does not have a way to protect their life total in the deck. Cadgar's so sassy. <laughs> Oh, right wow. Oh, oh no. <laughs> that is a disaster for Texas. Marvelous. I mean, they're they're on a burn plan now, it looks oh like. Oh, my gosh. Nine in hand, eight from Ragnaros, one from Hero Power. So they need a Ragnaros shot to the face, and they need time to cast their burn spells. I think that's their win condition suddenly. Beneath the grounds just completely went nuts this turn. Good lord, what were the odds of that happening? Not good. There's still got to be so 20 cards in deck, five, maybe a couple less. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 10 cards. There were 20 cards left in deck, so Beneath the Grounds puts in 23. So they're... Three out of... Approximately six and two-thirds to one to draw an ambush. And then on the next one, it's 10 to 1. Mm -hmm. That's pretty unlucky for Texas. They're going to play it defensively, too. And, and this was sort of my worry when this when I saw this was that they were going to panic. Oh, my, my gosh. God. Their outcomes have just been disastrous. These are some of the most unfortunate missiles that I've seen in a long time. This is like a like a Lemony Snicket's series of unfortunate yeah. missiles. <laughs> And that conceal is, I mean, it's going to do work. They're obviously worried about AoE, but there's nothing they can do about that. So, giddy up. How often is a Beneath the Grounds two four fours immediately? More often in my experience, it's been three mana zero four fours. Well, that's, that's a decent one. If you can get perfect missiles here. It's pretty good. It's not bad. Now, maybe the rag clears a couple minions off. Wow. I mean, they're still in this. 
I, I definitely think it's advantage NC State, but it's a lot closer than, than it looks to be. Oh, forgot about that little guy. It's amazing how much my perspective on patches changed just after the small time Buccaneer nerf. Imagine that. Now I look at him and I don't say, hmm, scumbag. I look at him and say, wow. hmm, not bad. Aggressive. Well, you can. Wait a minute here. Coin double coin. Double coin questing coin conceal. <laughs> Jeez. That, I think that'll do it. I don't see any reason not to. I see a couple reasons not to. I mean, you get cold blood online too. There's, there's definitely a lot of merit to the questing, though. Wow, if Texas has Flame Strike. That would just about be the draw of the century. I see it, though. Yeah. But, yeah, I think I think, I think, think that's why NC State goes for the questing here is because they didn't see. Whoa. Ah, they're going to go for mm. Cobalt the Patches. And are they trading off here? They're trying to deny all potential outs from Texas. <gasps> <gasps> oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? They're going to conceal. Wow. Oh, my God. Texas, I think, just took the lead. <laughs> Greetings, fellow seekers. No, Sassy Cadgar, why? Oh, man. Talk about a reversal. Wow. Edwin gets drawn. This is nuts. Give me a quest. It's a 6-6. Six, six. Fireball takes this out. Fire. Questing's still there, though. I think it dropped the rag. Oh, you're only facing down 12. I, I take it back. I think it dropped, I think it the, dropped portal. the Firelands portal. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm dropping the rag. Ah, really? Yeah. You can portal the questing, set up, you know, maybe ping the valet, the go rag. for Flame Wake or Fireball next turn. Oh, I don't know. 75% to hit a target you want to hit. If that's they, true. If they run their minions into Ragnaros. Well, you win. how much do you really want to hit You're at the valet? Twenty-three. Even if you hit face here, t NC then State's you just in trouble. yeah. Then flame waker, fireball, one missile to face plus hero power kills him next turn. Man, this game went so bad for NC State this has been so a, fast. It's been a roller coaster in this game. Flame strike was was the, the big difference. He's Hall of Fame for a reason. <laughs> yeah, for a good reason. It's still really good. <gasps> they have no Murlocs, though. So that's actually kind of a bad drop. But he has style. So there were Maybe Murlocs. Maybe they have Hungry Grab. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what if there's a hungry grab in the state stack? It's oh not my even God. off the table because they played <laughs> yeah. it in their shaman deck. That would just about be the icing on the cake for me. Well, NC State did draw the worst card in their deck at this point. Backstab. There's actually nothing in this spot. Oh, I forgot the Barnes was what made the Blood Mage too. Mm -hmm. I think you attack the Medivh's Valley first. Oh, okay. I'm okay with that as well. I mean, if you Flame Wake or Fireball, both missiles go on the Valley, then you just Hero Power. I don't really think you can go wrong here. Job's done. I, if Murlocs came out of that deck. Man, that'll be good enough to set up lethal. There's nothing that NC State can do. Oh, wait, wait a minute. You said nothing. Wow. This is crazy. But NC State has a gadgets in and a dream. Cold blood prep, eviscerate. Swash burglar into something. Seven. They need they need eight more damage. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is not real. This is not <laughs> happening. Well, Spellbender doesn't block a fireball to the face. Oh, you're right. And that's actually just but lethal wait, for Texas. Does Texas. I mean, they have to go for it. That's the only way they win, right? Yeah. But they still lose. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you just have to go for the fireball to face and hope. I mean, they can't live through minion pressure regardless of no. how they slice it. They can't afford to play the Flame Waker with it. 
Wow. What? I mean, look at the relief. I mean, it, it all came down to that flame strike. <laughs> NC State went all in. They had two early ambush draws, which gave them just a substantial board presence. And UT Austin was able to pick up the exact card that they needed at the exact time to turn that game around, the, and they did. The amount of impact that the Beneath the Grounds had is, is really sort of the start of that, too. If, if they don't hit an ambush on that early turn, the board presence continues to go in favor of... of Texas there. Yeah. They just continue to wipe out minion after minion after minion. Eventually, they scale the Ragnaros. Instead, it was like this nitty-gritty fight where they're trying to contain the board, and eventually the hope came down to drawing Flame Strike. So they did draw Nightmare cards, but they also drew Perfect cards as well. Everything kind of balanced out in the end. Oh, what a game it was. And now University of Texas Austin left with their Pirate Warrior, and NC State still needs to get a win with that Rogue deck with Beneath the Grounds. Uh, as well as their own mage. And that's a really tough matchup for NC State, is, is Rogue versus Pirate Warrior. I mean, even without small-time Buccaneer, the, the matchup is pretty much a nightmare. There's there's not really any way for them to effectively fight off against direct damage, and that's what the Pirate Warrior decks are full of. Core Chrono Elite, Heroic Strike, Fiery War Axe, Arcanite Reaper, Mortal Strike, Argent Horse Rider, upgrades on the weapons. I and mean, the whole deck is dedicated to dealing relentless amounts of pressure in the face of low disruption and combat disruption, that is. The question is, does the nerf to small time Buccaneer make the rogue just that little bit stronger that maybe it can take a win? It's going to be tough, but first we're going to see the Reno Mage for NC State. It's something to think about, too, is how well that rogue fought because of small time Buccaneer in the matchup. And that was one of the key cards from winning is having small time Buccaneer and having backstab. That's true. Now it's just backstab. Sure, your hero power him. kills a buccaneer naturally. I don't know. Your opponent's exhaust first mates kill it too. Yeah, that's true. It's going to be Reno Mage first. And so this matchup uh, tends to be a little bit Reno Mage favored. And, and a lot of it just comes down to the way that the cards actually match up. Even though NC State only has one of each of the cards in their deck, they have a lot of similar style effects. It's a lot of redundancy. Each one is meant to simply fight against a tool that Texas Pirate Warrior deck is bringing and come out ahead in value. Eventually you hit Kazakus or Reno Jackson and have that super powerful stabilizing tool to win you the game. Finley results fairly poorly for Texas in this, in this situation, and that's bad news for them. They need steady shot, they need life tap in this matchup to really keep their cards uh, dealing damage. Yeah, it's the second poor Finley result from them on the Pirate Warrior. You have a 37.5% chance to hit any particular hero power yeah. that you want. So in this case, it's a pretty big failure mm -hmm. to not hit Steady Shot or Life Tap. Honestly, Dagger Mastery is not that bad. They do have Upgrade and they do have the Blood Cell Cultist, but they have to think about how that affects their long-term damage. Suddenly, their hero power will deal nothing if they draw weapons. It's true. It's very relevant. They know the first few turns of damage are going to be negated by the Mistress of Mixtures. Maybe they feel Fire Blast, they can get this off the board, then start trying to ramp up damage, hopefully yeah. draw one of those weapons very quickly. And, and this is exactly what the Reno Mage wants to do, is they want to turn the early stage of the game into a board fight. If Texas is able to just get way ahead and not really think too much of it, that's a benefit for Texas. They don't want to fight for board. They want all this damage to be going straight upstairs. And this is a big nod to that. They just want to get something on board and start whacking away. Mistress has been negated, but NC State's facing down a 3-4 on turn 3 at 30 life. I think it's a, that's a minor victory. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime you can mitigate the first two turns as a Reno deck, you're, you're doing okay. Because then if you draw favorably from then on out. Like you said, it's it's slightly Reno Mage favorite. Argent Horse Rider is a big deal, though. I mean, that's certainly a card that makes this matchup uh, a bit of a nuisance for NC State. Is This card was typically not found in Pirate Warrior decks prior to this. The fact that it sticks around through all those little damage effects means that it chips away a lot of life. You could also elect to go first mate double upgrade but then you're playing very heavily into Acidic Swampus. Yeah, you, it's so hard to play around that, though. And, and the other thing, too, is that that turn would also deny Kazakus. Yeah. In that case. So mm -hmm. I think there is a lot of merit to simply play directly into it. I mean, maybe you just upgrade once, test the waters, and see where you go. But... Oh, man. 
Maybe if they just go play all in. Hero power and, just, and just wait. I think the all-in is right. It's, it's going to be heavily punished. Ooze is just such a strong card in the right situation. And that's the whole point of tech cards. They tend to be pretty bad, but when they're good, they're really good. Boom. Minus 12 damage. It's kind of amazing that that card three. has three two stats. Three cards for one. Oh, how is Texas going to dig themselves out of this hole? Competitive damage is out. Exactly what they're drawing right now. The Core Chronicle Elite, Frothing Berserker. Argent Horse Rider sticking around, but... NC State just drew the absolute Arino. counter to everything. Reno Jackson is never late. These are bad. Yeah. Take five, six, I think. Well, I certainly don't think it's Sacrificial Pact. Unless Texas you Kazakus for demons. The on turn six. <laughs> <laughs> Explain your, your interesting tech choice in your Pirate Warrior. Well, we don't have small time Buccaneer anymore. We still have one cost cards. So we figured Illidan Storm Rage, am I right? He makes two ones. You go Illidan, am you I coin right? a one drop. It's pretty good. Am I right? Just adds the perfect touch to that. <laughs> makes two ones. Illidan right? Storm Rage, am I right? Am I right? It's got the demon tag. We can call it a demon pirate deck. 20 life. Is, is NC State worried about anything at 20 life? Or do they feel like Emperor is just a slam here? I'm slamming Emperor. It's, it's, I think it's actually impossible for Texas to deal 13 from hand. It's the most damage they could deal from hand. Leroy is six, but then they would need mana. Mana. The six mana is the key there. So mortal strike, heroic strike. It's like a game. Heroic Strike, Heroic Strike, something. Like Fire War Axe, that'd be yeah. 11. They're going to take it slow, though. Polymorph. They're going to keep cutting into the damage. It looks to me like their game plan is Flame Strike the next wave and then Reno Jackson to win. At that point, the Reno just... Game's not over, but game's over. Well, Texas is not really drawing any weapons yet. I mean, they've drawn no Arcanite Reapers. They've drawn no Fiery War Axe. Say the, if the Corcoran sticks around, or like say the Dread Corsair and the Argent Horse Rider are there post Reno Jackson, and then they land an Archetype Reaper, that's like the hope that they have. But it's it's narrowing very quickly. If you get that Water Elemental down this turn, you can Frostbolt the Corcoran and attempt to shut out all weapon attacks from here on out. That's, that's definitely the bet I'm, that I'm going with. Frostbolt was uh, a magnificent draw for NC State. It's looking like game five. Kind of interesting. Two weeks ago, we saw a lot of 3-2s. Last week, we saw pretty much entirely 3-1 series. Uh, series. And then um, this week, now this could be the second 3-2. Um, certainly, I think that is a testament to the skill level of the teams that we're seeing. Earlier on in the tournament, it was kind of all over the place. It's been a lot more consistent in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, the teams that are, that are going 5-0 are the ones that uh, tend to be practicing more. You know, these guys aren't seasoned Hearthstone Championship Tour professionals. These guys are full-time students who are taking on competition on top of everything they're already doing. How much, how much time can you dedicate to the practice and to the tournament? It's a good question. Well, as a full-time student, uh, it's tough. <laughs> it's very tough. See, now Flame Strike looks a little bit dangerous. I mean, suddenly... Yeah, I mean, this is a big nod to that. But that's going to be good enough anyway. Yeah. This uh, leaves a 2-1 up on the board, but now you're at 30. With Kazakus. With a Flame Strike, with Dirty Rat. Well, that's probably the best draw in the deck for Texas. Do you kill the Water Elemental here? Imagine how differently this would have gone if Texas had not had their weapon oozed Oh, if they didn't on. have their weapon oozed, that would have been... They would have probably, they would have been probably flying high. 15 damage over five turns. Yeah. That's nuts. Well, 25 more to go. And Dirty Rat looking like it's about to seal us up. Dirty Rat Flame Strike. Or a Dirty Rat Forgotten Torch Hero Power. <laughs> if you really want to save the Flame Strike, you certainly can in this case. 
could also get Kazakis, get Kazakis down. down. Yeah. yeah. The point is they have all the options in the world, and that means that they win. <laughs> point is, Texas can do literally nothing to win this game. Yeah, at, this, at this point, they have no cards left that make a recovery from this board state. It means we're going to game number five. It's going to be Texas on their Pirate Warrior and NC State on their Miracle Road. It's, yeah, it's very one. unfavored for the road. They don't have... What, wait, did they have an ooze teched into their rogue deck? I feel like they did. It's possible. I don't know why I think that. I think it, maybe it was the Shaman They deck. had it in the Shaman. Yeah. Maybe they have an ooze in all three decks. I mean, that's possible. It's in two out of three so far. Certainly not unlikely. You may be seeing less pirate decks, but you're going to see a lot of mid-range Shaman now. Either way you slice it, that is going to be a tough game for them. Deal eight, gain ten is the potion, so, you know, take your pick. I think at this stage it could have been sheep all your own minions and resurrect Freeze the all your own from your opponent. <laughs> and you still would have won. It likely would have gotten there. Sheep all of your own minions, resurrect three of your opponent's minions for them. You might lose that. You might lose that. Maybe. But uh, I also don't know why you'd be playing Kazakus if that was... <laughs> The option that you I don't got. I understand why I'm using this card. It doesn't do anything. I mean, it's, it says it works in these Reno decks, but why would I want to sheet my own minions and give them three? With, with the way that I play, no with the way that I play like Reno Warlock, I always feel that way about twisting there. I'm like, this is just blowing up my own minions. <laughs> like I just always am fighting for the board, no matter what. I'm very, like I feel like Strife Crow a lot when I'm in those situations. Mm. I learned so much from him in the early days where he just constantly fought for board, no matter what. Yeah. He's like that minion He's incredibly attacking. Incredibly value oriented. That minion attacking is the most value. I was like, yeah, you're right. Speaking of most value, this is where UT's deck shines. All that damage piling on to NC State. They have to find a way to get a big threat online early. Questing Adventurer, Edwin Van Cleef, Cold Bloods with Conceal. Those are very large keys for them this game. And speaking of most value, there is an incredible amount of value on the line in this match. The winner of this next game is going to have a 5-1 record, meaning that they are through to the next stage of this tournament. And the losing team will be 4-2. and two. They will have to pick up a win next week if they want to make it through. The big stakes. The stakes are high. Wouldn't have it any other way. It's when it's the most exciting. Fear the wolf pack? Looks like these guys aren't backing down anytime soon. A little bit of a fan there. Yeah. Maybe, maybe fire I'm bats. Seeing, uh, I'm seeing a logo up there. Maybe we're not his favorite Kalenka, casters. Maybe Strife Crows we were just talking about. Yeah, that's a good point. Cloud Nine. Game five. This is going to be tough for NC State. If they could guarantee their beneath the grounds would go the same way. <laughs> that's true. That is a snap keep. However, they they don't have that liberty this game. If they so. could prep beneath the grounds on turn one, then Texas would immediately draw two of the ambushes. That'd be a good card. If it put all the ambushes just directly on top of your opponent's deck, it'd be, a Ooh, it'd be pretty good. And I think right to keep the coin here for NC State, too. Uh, they, they need to power out a threat very early, and so they have to take risks in this matchup. Even though they have no gas to go with immediately, that is a very vital card. Because you can get Edwin Van Cleef. Oh, double yeah. coin backstab Edwin. Ooh. And that might just be game over for Texas. Yeah. I mean, that that's the miracle draw for them is picking up early Edwin. But Texas... Uh, debating the merits of, of getting on the ground running here. And frankly, I like to turn one uh, South Sea Deckhand. I think it just presents a lot of problems for NC State. It's not it's not vulnerable to backstab. You know, it's, it's an overkill it on it. It's backstab, certain. you're happy. It's patches out of the way immediately. You get the Fiery War Axe, have Frawling Berserker. You think you'd like to see backstab here, honestly. Make sure I mean, the rest ideally, of your draws aren't patches. Ideally, you never see it. But <laughs> if you see it here, I, I don't think you're upset by it. If your opponent coins out a weapon, that means that's a coin they don't have. Yeah, and it's damage they're taking. Acro decks are certainly by no means uh, mindless, though. They're very forgiving a lot of times just because of their raw power. But a lot of times, missequencing with these decks means game losses. You, you'll miss damage. You don't trade properly. You lose an extra resource here or there. Ooh. That's a tough draw. That's about the worst one in the deck. Prep coin, they're, they're pretty equally as bad. That's why this matchup struggles so much. You have so many cards that are dedicated to comboing together. And so often your opponent's forcing you to have sort of makeshift use of your resources. 
It's actually really unfortunate for NC State because uh, against the Tempo Mage, they had a fairly good start. Um, and obviously the ambushes were very fortunate, but from that point, they looked so incredibly favored had they won that game. Had Texas not drawn the Flame Strike exactly when they needed it, they probably would have taken this whole series. Yep. And NC State going to give a nod to the Conceal draw. They need to save that backstab. This is a smart call from them. It's a lot of damage they're going to take because of it, but... So it's 12, 16 from hand, 17 with the patches. So with the 16 from hand right now, they are 10 damage off of ending the game. Again, NC State just doesn't have a way in their deck to protect them. They don't have taunts. No heal going on. All their heal availability is from stealing a card with Swashburglar or Shaku and hoping it's armor. That's so hard to do. You think it's more likely than it is. You got what? Shield block, bash, armor smith. Alley armor Alley smith. smith. It's Iron four out of okay, five out of. I, mean, there's, I know lot. there's another one I'm not thinking about. Public defender. Yeah. Blood of brave. I mean, there's quite a few defensive warriors. There's, there's taunts. Mm -hmm. Protect the king. <laughs> Actually, this could be really good in some situations. Yeah. But then for every taunt, there's shield slam. And Play Swatch Burglar to get Protect King and Bolster. Oh. Suddenly we're playing Bolster Rogue. Oh, baby. And you said Rogue didn't have taunts. Not naturally. In some fringe cases, maybe. I'm curious if the Blood Mage finds its way to the board here. I mean, NC State really needs another draw. And since they drew Eviscerate, saving the backstab to take care of Bloodsail Cultist or to take care of Frothing Berserker doesn't seem as priority anymore. I mean, if Texas were to clear off that Blood Mage with Fire War X, I think you consider that a win. Oh, yeah. And you need to get deeper in your deck. Anytime, anytime your minions are pulling heat and your opponent doesn't have a super strong follow-up with it, and that's the time NC State needs. The two conceals bogging down their hand right now. I don't think they're going to have that time. Not unless they pick up a questing very soon. Uh, but even then, it might just be too slow. They're already down to 22. Ooh. Well, Drake means they don't want to coin this turn. I think you can just conceal. Yeah. Conceal and, and use the eviscerate. Then you can coin Drake, backstab, and hit the cultist if Con it comes down. Conceals are very important for the race, though. Like, if they put together a cold blood with this... You have no tools to race at this point, though. You got to find that tool at some point. I don't know. This is a tough turn. You can't give up the coin if you want to play the Drake next turn. Don't want to take too much damage. You could Blood Mage backstab hit. You take three. Blood Mage goes down, so you cycle. You can still coin if they Blood Drake Mage next turn. Three. That means Texas needs to draw seven total damage to win the game. I ain't giving up the conceal's fine. You have another one in hand. I, what are the odds that you get a board on, you, you get a, you know, board presence and then are have the time to conceal twice to try to race your opponent? I just don't think it's feasible. I, I, th I think it's right too. I mean, I think it's right to use a conceal. It just, it just feels bad. These are really inefficient <laughs> uses of resources. Mm. That's not a good draw. They don't have time for that. And this Azure Drake is going to be uh, a very fiery end. Oh, they're going to take the damage. Okay. Makes perfect sense. Might meet a heroic end now. Yes. <laughs> but pulls damage. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 13, 15. You know, if they risk it instead, say, say they don't play the Heroic Strike and kill the Azure Drake here. If they land three attacks with Fire Your Axe, thanks to South Sea Deckhand and Blood Cell Cultist, that's lethal over three turns. So you may just see them forego the idea of trying to control the board any longer and get any minion value. Just start burning. Good War Axe, Heroic Strike this turn. Deckhand Cultist next turn. Do you ever and armor up? Anything you draw. Do you ever armor up? Um, so that's a math question. You've seen 
pretty sure much have. dead cards from your opponent up to this point. You've seen one eviscerate. I think you just go. Bring out the big guns. Down to nine for NC State. They need to find a two-turn lethal here. Well, if you're going to have a two-turn lethal, that's that's the way you start it. So say they draw preparations and coins with on the following turn with that auctioneer. That's their way to win. Okay, so eight goes in. I don't know. It's... It's 12 hidden. They would need to draw preparation, spell, preparation, spell, coin, spell. But... How much damage is that? Four, five, six, seven. Texas has it in two turns, guaranteed. So NC State neither either needs to prevent it or kill them this turn. Yeah, they're not preventing it, that's for sure. Swashburglar into something that could be is on the table. There's still two in deck. I don't think we've seen either. It's not called Miracle Rogue for nothing. That's a net one. Unfortunately, he's not called Ed Lose, but in this case... He's not going to win this game for NC State. Wow. Barely anticlimactic finish yeah. after this set. I mean, this set has been a, a totally exciting. There's been some crazy games in this one, but this is the nature of this matchup. The NC Rogue State tries so hard, they no fight tools. back. They have to counterattack as quickly as possible. And unfortunately, a lot of the time it still ends exactly the way you think it will. And Texas has taken this series three games to two. Their Pirate Warrior finally finding a win. It was an arduous task, but they got it over the Rogue. An incredibly favored matchup for them. And they secured themselves a playoff berth now. They did. Five That's and the one record part. overall. And NC State's still in the hunt for it. They have one more week left to get that win under their belt. They sit at 4 2 now. So their next week is a big one. But Texas right now. Team of the hour. Yeah, they have to be feeling great after that series. It was a close one. Uh, there were certainly some some crazy moments, but UT Austin has secured themselves that win over NC State. And NC State still has a chance next week. Maybe they won't be bringing Hungry Crabs. Um, I, I have hey, to they think. They won that game. They did win that game. 100% win for the Hungry Crab. I have to think if your opponent didn't bring three Murloc decks in the previous week that you wouldn't tech quite so hard against those deck choices. Uh, the rogue the rogue is just what ended up being their weakness in, in the series. It dropped the, to the Tempo Mage, it dropped to the Pirate Warrior. That was the difference between winning and losing was just simply the that deck not delivering in a couple of games. I mean the, the mage versus versus rogue matchup was just nuts. I mean that yeah. was that was one of the crazier back and forth next card of the deck reliant games yeah. <laughs> that I've seen in a while. Um mm. But that, you know, it's beautiful to see those sometimes. It's very rare that you get them quite as swingy as mm -hmm. that one was. Usually, like one or two key draws will change a game. In that one, it was just every single turn. It seemed like the perfect cards were getting drawn for both sides. And I don't think it's wrong to bring the rogue. I think now is a great time actually because pirates are weaker, so you have less aggression. Rogue is really great against Reno decks in a lot of cases. I think bringing the rogue and and targeting Reno is certainly an intelligent decision. Unfortunately, it just didn't work out for NC State this time, and we do have an interview with our winners. It is University of Texas Austin. Congratulations, guys. How does it feel Thanks. knowing you are now 5-1 and one in this tournament and you are moving on to the next stage? Feels amazing, man. Yeah, it feels really good. Yeah, well, you certainly just... have earned it. Thanks. <laughs> We're so giddy right now. Like, we got there. We made it. Yeah. Woo! That took you one week longer, but you certainly have managed to pull it out. Tell yeah. us, how did you guys form your team? How did we form our team? Well, I just I knew um, Connor and our other teammate who failed to show up again. <laughs> uh, uh, there, I, like I met Connor last semester. I met Jack in high school, and I was like, "Hey, you guys want to form a team?" And they were like, "Yeah, here we are." Worked out pretty well, I'd Simple. say. Simple. Yep. Nice and easy. That's the way I like it. Now you guys are five and one record. It's you know an incredible success so far. Uh, it says here you guys brought three Murloc decks last week, and your opponent actually ended up playing Hungry Crab in response. Uh, yeah. What made you want to change your builds for this week? Okay, well uh, the Finja lineup um, that was when, we were, when I was last on stream, and uh, we thought, okay, this is like deciding for playoffs. So as much as I want to bring four meme decks, like. I also kind of want to win, so 
So that's, we decided to go with our four yeah, aggro decks. Like the, how we protect against the Ruler of Beta Dorino. What's that? We like we picked the Zoo Lock and Tempo Mage to make them think we had Reno Mage and Reno Lock, and then they like just mulliganed against that. Yeah. Hopefully, like they banned out their Warrior and like Pirate Warrior or Control Warrior, both pretty good against their decks. But because they thought we were Reno decks, we got there. So it's mind games. I I like it. It's yeah. it's one of the better uses that you can have in a week to week submission alongside a self ban. Yeah. I you know commend you on that. Um, now that you guys are five one, you have security. You mentioned that you you wanted to play serious this week, but the week previous it was a little bit more lighthearted. Are we going to be seeing some fun in week seven, or are you guys going to be super serious <laughs> for the six one record? It's a good question. I guess it's uh, probably some fun. Probably some meme decks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe uh, maybe Jack will show up next week. He can have some fun so. with you guys. Sure. Tell us about uh, University of Texas Austin, what the esports scene is like. Do you have a lot of people playing Hearthstone as well? You do have yeah. 11 teams in this tournament. That's impressive. 11 teams. Yeah, yeah. The esports scene here is huge. Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, Tes TESPA started at UT, so naturally, we've got like tons of people, tons of people like too many. <laughs> it's, it's pretty great. It's great to be in a place with so many other like-minded people. Yeah. I think you could never have too many gamers. That's just me. Like, unless you're, like, violating fire code or something. Okay, yeah, true, true. <laughs> if you are actually breaking laws, maybe yeah, it's too many gamers. In a philosophical sense is what I mean. <laughs> but in this case, uh, it seems like UT Austin is thriving, and you guys are as well. Is there anybody maybe you want to give a shout-out to? Any final words? Uh, just, you know, shout-out to everyone that watched. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you. Yeah, hey, Mom and Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Always good to shout-out Mom and Dad. I think that's that's a, yeah. that's a safe bet. Uh, make sure they keep helping you out with college. Well, congratulations, guys. Fantastic job. Thanks. You are moving on to the next round of this tournament. Best of luck. Well played. Thank Thanks. you. All right, UT Austin, one of 11 teams from the TESPA first school uh, that actually started this whole thing, and now they have secured their spot in the next stage of the tournament. Yeah, and, and with a performance, like, it's just night and day from last week, or last time we saw them on broadcast and mm -hmm. today. They, they brought... He literally had a full finja lineup. Yeah, and they went full finja. And it was this awesome. week, it's the mind games came in with the tempo mage, and he said a zoo lock. And now that I'm looking at the pager here. Yeah, they, they brought zoo lock here, mm -hmm. hoping that they could draw out a band that looked like it was going to be weak to Reno decks. And then the payoff happens. They're aggro decks instead. It was some mind games for sure. Maybe manipulating the self ban a little bit, uh, which I really like to see because. You know, personally, I think people can take more advantage of the self-ban and really craft their lineup and build their their plays around that. So congratulations to University of Texas Austin on their 5-1 and one record and making it into the next round of this tournament. We have another tweet to bring up on stream. Let's see what we've got here. This one comes to us from Carlo AGB. What were your thoughts on Ben Brode's epic song, Love from Bolivia? Work of art. A masterpiece. Timeless. I've started memorizing it. Classic. Astounding. Brilliant. Genius. Rembrandt. Masterful. Rembrode. <laughs> Rembrode. <laughs> ben Rembrode. It's as uh he's he's asked to be called now. Yeah. I he actually just told me yeah. that in my ear mm -hmm. right now. We got that right he's now. He's here for some reason. He's right Believe there. Believe it or not. You can't see him, but he's, he's there. He's here. Nope. He's don't nope. He's there. Absolutely. So if you have any questions that you want to ask us, as long as they're not about whether or not Ben Brode is actually here, tweet at Team Tespa. Go on Facebook forward slash Team Tespa. If your question gets chosen to be featured on stream, you get the Dalaran Flame card back. It may not be a Rembrode, but it's quite nice. It's lit. It's pretty great. We have one more match coming up today. Let's take a look at what it is. Duke, three games to two over Georgia State. Texas just now, three to two over NC State. They have secured their spot in the next round of this tournament. And coming up next, it's going to be brother versus brother or sister versus sister. It's the Cal v. Cal grudge match. We will be right back with our final match of the day right after this. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 